Hello and welcome to another episode of Elk Tech. I'm your host Brian and today we're going to get started with our third video in the series of computer components and how your computer works. So today we're going to be talking about the central processing unit or the CPU. This is realistically the brain of the computer. It's going to do all of the actual thought processing and uh, make all the decisions in what's going on in your computer. One of the first things that we need to talk about is there are two different types of CPUs when you go out to purchase them. You have your PGA or your pin grid array, which on the left there you can actually see where it has pins coming up out of the bottom of the CPU. This is our PGA type where we actually have to stick those pins into the socket on the CPU and it will just fit really nicely in there. If at any point in time you bend one of these pins, you're basically done and need to purchase a new CPU, so be very careful with these. The other type on the right is an LGA, or a Land Grid Array. This is where the pins are actually inside of the socket on the motherboard, and what you have there is you have a bunch of small nubs on the bottom of that CPU on the right, and they just fit ever so nicely on top of the actual pins that are in the uh, motherboard socket. Alright, so when we are looking at CPUs, we have uh, different cores. When we're going out to purchase a, a CPU or we're looking at the, the new CPU that we want to put into our computer, one of the most important things is the core. So you could have a single core processor. This basically means that uh, the CPU can only handle one, possibly two things at a time and uh, only has one central core to do all of its processing. Um, this isn't, uh, you know, the, the greatest of processors. They don't sell a ton of these anymore. Um, the next thing you have is your dual core, your core two duos, you know, anything like that is a dual core where it's split uh, up in the picture up there you can see where you basically have a CPU and you have core one and you have core two. This allows basically your CPU to be split into two and it can do two different things at the same time in each core. Then you actually have a, a triple core which is not seen very much at all. This is basically a quad core with one of the cores disabled. And then what you have, which is the most common, this is the one that most people would uh, prefer to have, and that's the quad core. This is where you have one processor, like up in the upper right here, and then you have four cores within that processor. You can then get into your hexa and your octa-core processors for six and eight cores inside. Um, and then you, you start to kind of get, uh, most people consider that a little bit ridiculous because in your home you're not really going to be able to push a hexa-core or an octa-core uh, to its, its absolute max. Um, but uh, your quad-core is typically what you're going to want to purchase, be able to save yourself some money as well as be able to get a really nice processor. What's really important though is that not only are you going to purchase a CPU that has um, uh, you know, dual or um, quad cores, but then you also need to look at the performance enhancing features that your CPU is going to come with. So with Intel, Intel comes with what's called hyper-threading. Hyper-threading uh, uses processor resources more efficiently, enable, enabling it to run multiple threads on each core at the same time. This increases the, thru the throughput and improves overall performance. What this basically allows you to do then is now if you have a quad core and each one of those cores is able to do multi-threading, that means each core can do multiple things at once, in theory you could have all four cores running two things at once, essentially making it eight cores. This is why it starts to get kind of uh, ridiculous when you get into the hexa and octa-core processors because with uh, um, hyper-threading you're really getting more out of your uh, cores. Now AMD on the other hand doesn't have hyper-threading. What they have is what's called hyper-transport. Uh, and the hyper-transport increases the actual communication speed between the integrated circuits. This reduces the number of buses in a system uh, that are required, which can reduce bottlenecks and allow the system to utilize memory more efficiently. So it kind of speeds up the entire process, whereas the hyper-threading just allows more processes to happen at the same time. Uh, both have their pros, their cons, and both great technologies. 
Uh, the next thing that you have to look at is the speed of your processor. Um, so the processor, the CPU, uh, the speeds are measured by not only the speed but also the amount of data that it can process. The speed of the CPU is measured in uh, cycles per second. So when you see um, that it's uh, rated in megahertz or the MHZ that's there, that means that it's millions of cycles per second. Then you also have your gigahertz. This one is more common now um, and this is billions of cycles per second. So typically you're looking at your CPU and maybe you want to get a quad core core i5 processor that's say 3.4 gigahertz, okay? So the gigahertz or uh, the 3.4 gigahertz is your processing speed. You now know that you have a quad core, so you have four cores. Um, and then what you need to look at too though is, um, is, is what's called your front side bus. And this is not um, typically looked at as much as it really should be. The front side bus is, is really important. The amount of data that the CPU can actually process at one time depends upon the size of the front side bus or the FSB. Uh, the front side bus connects the CPU and the RAM uh, as well as other components. So when we talked about those channels during our motherboard uh, uh, discussion previously, uh, those are actually called your buses, okay? So your front side bus is then what really connects your CPU to the RAM and your CPU to your other components. Um, it's also sometimes referred to as the system bus. The front side bus is, is really important because you have a CPU that say runs at 4.2 gigahertz but you may have a front side bus that is only 400 megahertz. What does this mean? Well, so you, your processor can have a, a ratio. So if your processor is a 2.4 gigahertz with a front side bus of only 400 megahertz, the ratio is 6 to 1. All right. So while the processor, uh, if the processor then say is a two gigahertz, so lower, but the front side bus is one gigahertz, your ratio has gone from six to one to two to one. The smaller the ratio, the more efficiently the processor will actually work. So you can't just go out and buy this massive processor that runs at 4.2 gigahertz and expect it to be all fine and dandy. You need to make sure that you have a front side bus that's going to uh, lower your ratio and uh, ensure that it can run more efficiently. If you have a really high ratio, the CPU can process as fast as it wants, but it's going to have to wait for data to be sent over the bus before it can process new data, which is then going to cause an issue for you, as then you're basically going to have a bottleneck. Um, so uh, again, make sure that when you're, you're purchasing, you're, you're looking at that front side bus. Uh, lastly, we're going to talk about overclocking. So everyone likes to uh, overclock their CPU. Um, and overclocking is a technique that makes the processor work at a faster speed than its original specifications. This is kind of dangerous. It's not recommended by the manufacturer. I don't recommend it myself um, because you can run into a lot of issues with overheating. You can actually burn up your CPU, even your motherboard. Um, and you really don't want to put that kind of risk on a, a system, especially if you don't have the money to go out and buy new parts should something bad happen. Um, you can uh, run the result of damaging your CPU in multiple different ways here. But what's also important is let's go back to that front side bus. If you have a low front side bus and you're overclocking your computer, that means that essentially what you're doing is you're creating a larger ratio, which means that the processor can continue to process faster and faster. But if the front side bus can't carry that data fast enough, you're going to run into a bottleneck and essentially you're going to slow down your system. So with overclocking, make sure if this is something that you want to pursue, make sure that you have the front side bus for it. Make sure that your, your motherboard can handle it. Make sure that your processor and everything else is going to work well in this situation. Uh, you'll go into your BIOS to make a lot of these changes in order to actually overclock your CPU. So uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, make sure that you check out my website if you're not already there for the rest of the videos in this tutorial and how things uh, work inside of your computer. Um, also, go ahead and make sure to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see all the latest videos that come out. Also on my website, I have 
a whole lot more videos, tips, and tricks on many other things than just uh, the internal workings of a computer. So make sure you check that out. And thanks for watching. Be, be, be.